Hey guys, so YouTuber Joey Graceffa just published a video called Why I Stopped Being Vegan, What I Eat in a Day. Honestly, I don't really want to talk about that part of it, the, the vegan part of it. He mentions it briefly about halfway into the video, like 13 minutes into the video, um, and talks about that he just wasn't feeling great, had lost some weight and is trying to gain weight back, um, and that he feels more satiated eating some animal products uh, particularly chicken. But ultimately, I mean, the whole video, he eats mostly plant-based. He eats uh, chicken, like I said, and like the salad, and he has like bone broth, collagen powders in his smoothie. And I think that's it from what I remember. And he encourages people to eat less animal products, particularly beef, which is really cool. And then at the end of the video, his um, boyfriend, Daniel, makes this really beautiful meal. He uses the Beyond Burger patties with like avocado on top and some roasted Brussels sprouts and squash, I think. And it just looks really beautiful and delicious. This is like our go-to easy meal when I'm feeling a little lazy and don't want to cook. But it's also an easy way to incorporate a vegan slash vegetarian meal into your day. It's not that hard. It took me like 15 minutes. So. so yeah, there's just, there's not a whole lot for me to say. I think I've talked about before. I don't really like touching on the why I quit being vegan, why I'm no longer vegan um, videos. I have a couple times in the past, but I normally don't because, you know, look, I, I know it's hard being vegan. <laughs> like it it is. For most people, it's really hard and it's really hard to stay vegan. And there are a lot of reasons for that. You know, it is a restrictive diet. You do have to strict, you have to eliminate a lot of products. And anytime you do that, you do have to put more work into your diet to make sure that you are meeting nutrient needs. And of course, there's the social aspect, there's the social pressure from friends and family, and just the, you know, people worried that you're not healthy, because a lot of people don't think that you can be healthy and not eat animal products. What the... I'm vegan, but God, I hate bugs so much. Anyway, there's also, you know, again, the, the social stuff, just feeling left out at restaurants and like, you know, parties and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot to it. And for a lot of people, it's, it's just too much. It's just too much to even get started. And then for a lot of people, it's too much to stick with. Most people don't stay vegan long term. And honestly, that's okay. You can still make a difference by cutting back on animal products, just like Joey says. Even just starting with like a meatless Monday or having, you know, a few meals a week vegan or something or starting breakfast vegan, a lot of people like that because a lot of us just don't really care about breakfast, so it's pretty easy to veganize. That's a huge improvement. For anyone who is interested in veganism and vegan nutrition, please do not get your information from people like me from like vegan YouTubers. Um, many of them promote even more restrictive vegan diets, you know, no soy, no gluten, um, low fat, raw. It's totally unnecessary, obviously, unless you have like celiac disease or a soy allergy or something. Instead, I would highly recommend checking out the veganrd.com and veganhealth.org. These sites are run by actual dietitians. Um, they are promoting like a balanced vegan diet, not fad diets and juice cleanses and all that nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, there's quite a bit of it in Joey's video, and this is what I really want to focus on. So early on, he talks about eating a candida diet. Because I've been very sick, I've been focused on my health and recovering my immune system. So a lot of the foods you're gonna see are on a candida-based diet. If you guys don't know what candida is, basically it's fungus in your body and it can overgrow and um, it can cause a lot of different health issues, which I have faced. So that's currently what I'm trying to battle. And if you give it too much sugar, you're feeding it. So first, what is a candida diet or an anti-candida diet? Um, essentially, it is a low sugar diet, as Joey alludes to. And that on its own would be fine. I mean, most of us eat way too much like sugar, refined carbs, pastries, and cereal, and chips, and candy, and all that delicious stuff. Um, but it's not just refined sugar, it's also like whole sugar, like fruits. Most fruit is off limits. Gluten containing grains like wheat are also off limits and many other foods have to be limited like beans and rice and nuts and starchy vegetables. But why? Why would someone avoid healthy foods like whole wheat and fruit and beans? Because of candida overgrowth, which apparently can be caused by eating a diet that is high in carbohydrates, high in sugar. So you eat too much sugar, the candida grows out of control, 
breaks down the wall of the intestine and penetrates the bloodstream, releasing toxic byproducts into your body and causing leaky gut. So how do you know if you have candida overgrowth, also called candidiasis hypersensitivity syndrome? Chronic fatigue, brain fog, digestive issues, yeast infections, sinus infections, food sensitivities, a weak immune system, joint pain, and low mood can all be caused by an overgrowth of candida. Except only one of those is true, and I'm sure you can guess which one. Fungal infection. If you have thrush or you have a vaginal yeast infection, then yes, you have an overgrowth of candida, but it is not an overgrowth of candida in the bloodstream. Candida can enter the bloodstream. It's called invasive candidiasis or systemic candidiasis, and it's incredibly serious. Most cases happen to people while they are in hospital and are already very sick. This is not a condition that happens because someone eats a lot of sugar or is overly stressed. And of course, if you actually have invasive candidiasis, which you're probably not watching this video, you're in the hospital, but if you do, then you won't be treated with a low sugar diet and probiotics. You'd be put on antifungal medication. And really the same goes for thrush. It's uncommon in healthy adults. People at risk already suffer from some illness and to get rid of it, you need antifungal medication. Vaginal yeast infection is much more common than thrush, but the treatment is the same. Now, when it comes to thrush, there is actually some very limited evidence that diet may have an effect. This in vitro study found that certain sugars promoted better adhesion of candida to human epithelial cells, but this small trial in actual humans found no correlation between a high sugar diet and increased candida growth. So the popular idea that sugar causes candida overgrowth and that limiting sugar will cure you of it not only doesn't have much science in support of it, but some research directly challenges it. And like I already said, there's no convincing evidence that candida growth causes the other symptoms that I listed earlier, the brain fog, low mood, etc. In fact, there's actually evidence against it. So in this small randomized controlled trial, they looked at women with recurring vaginal yeast infections, and they also had to have three of the following um, supposed symptoms of candida overgrowth, digestive issues, respiratory issues, PMS, depression, and essentially brain fog. While antifungal treatment did improve the yeast infection itself, it had no significant effect on the other things, mood, digestion, brain fog, etc. If all of these symptoms were really caused by candida overgrowth, then you would expect the antifungal medication to improve them as well. It didn't. Yes, this is only one study, but it's all we have. The only evidence we have for any of this says that it's not a thing. But then why do people get better? Right? There are tons of stories of people curing their, you know, depression, chronic fatigue, whatever else by following a candida diet. I'm sure people have experienced that, but it's not because the candida diet actually did what it's supposed to do. It's not because it actually reduced the number of candida in their body. If you stop eating sugar and white flour, you'll generally wind up cutting out most processed foods, which tend to be higher in calories and lower in nutritive value. Within a few weeks of replacing processed foods with fresh ones and white flour with whole grains, you may start to feel better in general. That, rather than stopping the growth of yeast in the gastrointestinal tract, is probably the main benefit of a candida cleanse diet. It's like virtually any other diet plan, right? Very, pretty much every diet completely excludes or at least severely limits processed foods. Like I said in my video on the carnivore diet, eating more whole foods and less processed foods will probably make you feel better, right? And if that diet means that you are also excluding some food that you happen to be sensitive to, that will probably help as well. So then why do so many people like Joey flock to these sorts of diets, to the candida diet and whatever else? I think because it's really appealing. This idea that there is essentially one cause of several different illnesses that can be fixed by cutting out sugar, eating some probiotics, eating some other supplements, and that'll fix it and you'll feel amazing, it's really appealing. And why do people promote the candida diet? That should be pretty obvious. On one doctor's website, I was offered an online quiz. After checking off only that I sometimes crave sweets, have seasonal allergies, and take birth control pills, the site informed me that I likely have candida overgrowth and recommended a $249 candida control program to help cure me. 
Yeah, did I mention that virtually all of the sites promoting this idea of candidiasis hypersensity syndrome are actually making money off of the belief that candida overgrowth causes brain fog, etc.? Yeah. So that is the candida diet. It is a very restrictive diet with no evidence to support it. If Joey does start feeling better, it very, very likely won't be because he has cured a candida overgrowth. And it won't be because of this candida drink that contains Pau Diarco, something with no good scientific evidence to support its use. It won't be because of these silly juice shots, one of which contains colloidal silver, which has no evidence to support its use either, and the FDA does not consider it safe. And it also won't be because of this de-bloat food that's just powdered fruit and spices. It also costs $75, by the way. If he does start feeling better, it will likely be because he's just eating healthier. Maybe he's eating less processed foods, eating more whole foods. Maybe there was some food or foods that he is actually sensitive to. Maybe that's causing his digestive troubles and he's gotten rid of that food, so now he feels better. But why does it matter? I mean, for most people, eating a candida diet would be a huge improvement over their normal diet, right? Like a normal processed too many calories diet, it would be an improvement. So what's the big deal? There are several reasons, um, I think, to point out that these diets are stupid and have no evidence and to not fall for them ourselves, right? Um, I talked about this in my video on the medical medium and his celery juice. For one thing, these types of fad diets, these kind of cleanses, they often go hand in hand with supplements, many of which are not harmless. Another problem is that someone may um, avoid medical care that they actually need. So maybe someone has a yeast infection or some serious illness, and instead of going to their doctor and getting proper treatment, they just start a candida diet. These sorts of diets also run the risk of getting people's hopes up because they're always sold as these amazing things, again, with no evidence to support them. And it's pretty much inevitable that a lot of people are going to be let down because the diet doesn't turn out to be this magic cure-all. And finally, these sorts of diets also tend to go hand in hand with other dangerous beliefs. For example, it's no surprise that these sites that are promoting this candida overgrowth myth are also like havens for anti-vax bullshit. So that's the candida diet. It's pretty dumb. You know if you have a candida overgrowth pretty much, right? And if you suspect you do, obviously please go to the doctor and get a diagnosis and get help from a medical professional, not from the candidadiet.com. Obviously this one's not supposed to be mean towards Joey. Um, I feel, I feel bad, honestly, when people are kind of duped by this stuff because I get that it can be really appealing. I mean, I used to eat a raw food diet, so I get it. <laughs> I get it, trust me. Yeah, I, I feel bad seeing people taken in by this kind of stuff, but I mean, the reality is Joey has a huge following. He's influencing a lot of people. I think those of us who see YouTubers promoting stuff like this, promoting something that could be potentially dangerous, it's definitely something that we should be pointing out and saying like, hey, that's actually not evidence-based. Obviously, don't just take my word for it. I will have um, all my references and whatever in the description. You can read from the CDC. You can read from um, experts and doctors saying that no, this is not a thing. That's not what candida overgrowth is. I'm not just making this up. I'm getting all of my information from experts. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe. That's pretty cool. Support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan, and I will have a new video very soon. I just cannot get over how expensive this stuff is. The de-bloat food plus prebiotic. It, that is just incredible to me. It's just fruit powder. It's this McKee fruit powder, which of course has like no evidence to support all the, the claims. It's supposed to be magical and all of that. Of course, there's no evidence for it. And then it's just cinnamon and ginger and turmeric. Oh God. And I just noticed it's only 20 servings per container. Wow. So that's not even a month's worth. I mean, that's one thing I was going to mention about a vegan diet is that, you know, a lot of people do struggle with the cost unless you are making everything yourself, cooking everything from scratch, then it's really cheap. But if you're buying all the yummy mock meats and Beyond Burgers and stuff, the stuff that I personally like to buy, yeah, it can definitely be more expensive. But I mean, I didn't mention it because obviously, obviously that's not a problem for Joey. <laughs> 
if he's willing to buy prebiotic cinnamon powder for $75, it's obviously not an issue. 